All right, start of hour two here on Sports Talk. Welcome back. Steve Kaplow, it's Adrian Broadus with you. And now, without any further ado, Mario Mocha, Director of Athletics, New Mexico State University. Great to see you back. Hope you've had a good summer. And I can't believe that the Battle of I-10 is a week and a half away. Less than that now, what, nine days? It's incredible to think about how football season is right around the corner. No, you're right. It is. Um, shoot, it starts tonight. We've got uh, soccer, you know, first match uh, under the lights in, uh, what, two hours. So it's really starting for us uh, tonight. And we've got Texas Tech here in volleyball on Saturday. And then obviously, yeah, you know, a, a, a big, big game in football uh, on Saturday. We got a lot of stuff around it, too. So I'm really excited. Does it feel like athletic season is here? I guess it is because you've got so much going on, but has it, you know, school just started what yesterday with everybody back in, in on campus now. So is it really starting to sink in that, Hey, we're, we're jumping right back into uh, to an athletic season, especially after what you had to endure last year. Yeah. You know, I'm just happy, no matter how you get frustrated on certain things or you're overworked, you got a small staff, uh, at the end of the day, you're just excited that you get to play at home. You can feel it with the student athletes, with the fan base. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just really excited to get it started tonight. And then, you know, you got a big, big game uh, to start out with. That's always uh, gets the uh, juices flowing a little bit. You know, I don't want to say that an entire athletic year could be considered a mulligan. But is it almost like that for you, uh, that, that the 2020-21 season was the kind of thing that you just kind of erase it and, and almost say it didn't happen because of what you and, and obviously the University of New Mexico and all the other institutions in the state had to endure through COVID? Yeah, I think, um, you know, you never want to think of it as a mulligan. You never want to use excuses. But at the end of the day, um, it was unbelievably difficult for student athletes and staff, and it took a toll. But you know what I saw? You know, physically, when we didn't, you know, you, you build a house, you lay a foundation, and then you build on top of it, right? You always want to build a strong foundation. You know, we, at the start of the year, we really, in the state of New Mexico, weren't allowed to train, condition, get in the weight room for like six to eight weeks. And that really, even though softball, right, won the regular season championship and volleyball won the regular season championship, it almost looked like instead of surging, like when, when the pandemic hit, Aggie basketball, we won, what, 19 games? I mean, we were like on this upward juggernaut. It just seemed this past year we were chugging to the finish line. And I think it's because we didn't have that preparation that's so critical in athletics, you know, for the long haul and peaking at the right times. Mario Mocha with us here on Sports Talk as uh, we continue via our Zoom chat. Miners and Aggies, Battle of I-10, now be at uh, Aggie Memorial uh, a week from Saturday, 7.30 kickoff. The party will start much earlier with the tailgating and everybody getting excited about that. And you have once again put on your P.T. Barnum hat because you are trying to turn this into a great circus-like carnival atmosphere, which is the way of rivalry should be, right? No, there's no doubt. I mean, they mean a lot. Um, and rivalry games mean a lot to everybody, but in this part of the, this neck of the woods, when you've got two hundred year rivalries, uh, yeah, they mean a lot. I think they should be celebrated. And I think, um, you know, you should pull out every single stop that you can to get a great crowd and entertain people. And, uh, that includes bringing Lucha Libre, uh, wrestling to the parking lot area. You're going to have DJs and I don't know, will there be food trucks there? I mean, it sounds to me like it's just going to be crazy. Oh, well, yeah. You know, uh, first of all, we're blessed because uh, Admiral Beverage Coors Light is the official uh, um, uh, beer of Eggy Athletics. And uh, they're the sponsor of the game, along with Hispanic Heritage uh, or Las Cruces Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So uh, a couple of years ago in 2019, we're playing San Diego State. That Hispanic Heritage Day won a national award um, for, you know, creative creativity. Um, and we're doing that again. So we've got, you're right, Luchador Wrestling. So I know you're going to participate. Somebody, we're going to have mariachi. Somebody said, can I do both? I said, that means you smash your mariachi, you know, instrument over somebody's head in the wrestling match. <laughs> but we'll have that. We'll have food trucks. We'll have a million uh, tents out there with giveaways and uh, tailgating. So it should be a very festive atmosphere. You can walk around, have a great time. And then, you know, it's a little unique. We're going to have a 730 kick. 
Um, we wanted to be on uh, national TV. You know, I, I think unless you just have like a ham radio, you're going to be able to watch the game because it's on uh, uh, multiple outlets, but it will be on Valley Sports Arizona. That's Fox Sports Arizona. So it's going to be able to be seen nationwide along with Flow, KVIA, you name it. Um, so we're excited about the, the, uh, the, the reach that it's going to get across the region and the country. Well, I, I don't know about you, but as, as great as it is in the area, knowing that it's going to be on so many places to watch the game, I'd rather be there because rivalries like this only happen once a year in football, twice in basketball, and they're fun to watch. They're usually very competitive, lots of fireworks on and off the field, and it's just the kind of thing you want to be a part of. There's no doubt. I mean, look, as the AD, and I, I'm Sue Jim Center would probably say the same thing. There's a little, um, you know, um, I guess Paul Tagliabue and me, or it'd be Pete Rosell, I guess, where the, it has to be a complete sellout before the game goes on television. In a perfect world, you know, you make everybody come to the game. Not really feasible in today's day and age. So, you know, you can't just go halfway there. May as well put the game on TV, but give people a reason to come. And in addition to mariachi bands, luchador wrestling, food trucks, all the free giveaways. I mean, you got Keystone the horse leading the team out. You got striking the wonder dog. You got all this stuff in and around the game and all the giveaways. Um, you know, I hope that's compelling to say, yeah, I can watch a million games on TV, but right. It's the, it's the Aggies and the minors. I got to be there. Exactly right. Mario Mocha is with us, director of athletics in Mexico state. As we continue here on sports talk, there's a lot going on with this football game. Now I love sure. striking the wonder dog. I think that's how many wonder dogs have we had over the years at New Mexico oh, state? Boy, you know what? That is a question for the marketing department. I, I don't want to break any news here, but I think during this season, we may transition. I mean, striking uh, has done a yeoman's effort and he may be, uh, you know, settling down to Miami beach uh you know and retiring but uh with that hey let's not you know let's not uh, uh break all the news in one in one day well is this like is this striking two three four five is it number yeah. one the original strike you know, Do we know? I, I, no i have been told that but anything i say would be fake news like i would not be able to report accurately here's the beauty here's the beauty i mean you could retire this striking bring a new one in. And then all of a sudden, as long as, the, as long as the dog is trained to go grab the tea and, uh, and not drop a deuce down on the field, like they did 20 something years ago during a UTEP New Mexico state football game, we'll be okay. Well, we, uh, we will make sure that doesn't happen. You know, um, um, Steven Sohai is the, um, is the handler for striking. He's also a professor in the Department of Engineering, and he's a great Aggie supporter, and he, uh, he's wonderful. So yeah, that's a big deal. Uh, but I know nearer and dearer to your heart, this will be the first Aggie football game, I believe, in history that um, beer will be hawked in the stands. Okay, you've always had to go up there, but you know, working with our Sodexo folks, yeah. we'll actually have you know hawkers over there, so you don't necessarily have to get up out of your seat to to get one of your fine beverages. So it reminds me of a baseball game. That's exactly what it's going to be like. You're well, going to have beer salesmen coming to you. Yeah, and I actually encourage Sodexo to call uh, the uh, Chihuahuas because, you know, hawking is not something you just slap over your deal. I mean, you know, when you I, I remember going to St. Louis Cardinal games or going to Wrigley. I mean, those dudes are like those are those are like surgeons over there. Boom, 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 boom. You know, do the uh, get the change out. So uh, hopefully we'll. Uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll have some experienced talkers in the stands. Now, apparently this is going to be only one of five games in week zero, zero week, and the only one in its time slot. And you know, as well as I do, because you just talked about how you want national TV. If you've got the, uh, sl the time and uh, the game all to yourself, there's going to be a lot of people uh, that are going to be interested in this game for wagering purposes and wanting to get a preview of what's going to come for the Aggies and Miners the rest of the season. Well, you're right. I mean, people have been salivating for football. And I think I'll, I'll remind you when we played, uh, uh, I guess it was University of Wyoming, we played uh, in zero week and we were on ESPN two, and my phone was blowing up. I'll never forget. One of my good friends is the AD at Georgetown, Lee Reed. He's like, man, this crowd looks great. So on and so forth. We really tried to make a, make a great crowd. Um, so you're right. I mean, you know, we have a vested interest because we want to put um, our best foot forward as a, athletic program as a university and certainly as a community and 
uh, a lot of the country uh, are going to be are going to be tuning in. Now, I know, um, you know, you mentioned Coors Light. That's important. You've been busy, though, uh, cornering the market on alcohol over the last couple of years. So we now have an official beer, wine, rye whiskey, tequila. Uh, what am I leaving out? Uh, you've got everything. I don't know. Cap, I don't know if I'm a lap. I don't know if I can step away. Can I show you Jim Center's visiting AD basket right now? Oh, I got to see this. This right, I on, have to on, see. Oh, yeah. This is beautiful. So Mario Mocha is walking away from his chair because he is going to actually show us what Jim Center will be given when he arrives as the visiting AD for UTEP and New Mexico's Battle of I-10. And knowing Mario Mocha, this has got to be Super well, we're doing impressive. This after five o'clock, and you know yeah. that I can't hold on. My faculty athletic rep is here. This is, I, I hope nobody judges our athletic department on what's happening when I'm going to ask my faculty athletic rep to get some booze. Wait, one second. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. is good. Hey, did yeah. you open Maria's thing and bring that thing of booze <laughs> for me? I'm on live with Capital right now. Oh, I love right him. There, there is nobody better than Mario Mocha. Hey, who Dr. Is, <laughs> Hey, Dr. Kevin Melendres is our faculty athletic rep. He comes over here all the time. <laughs> He's a, a professor of accountancy. He's like super genius. I, I had, we had a whack meeting today and he's given a presentation and all these ADs are saying, boy, your FAR is really on top of it. I'm like, yeah, he's, we're blessed here that we have such a guy and he's actually opening my assistant's office so we can, I can show you this. Ah, very nice. By the way, this is also being asked, any chance that Mario Mocha and Jim Center can put on some Lucha Libre masks and get in the ring for a friendly match? That's coming from a Leo underscore Miners fan. Uh, Jim played football, didn't he? He did. He did. Yeah, I'm a baseball player, man. You can't look. I, I don't grapple with those guys. I this baseball, I avoid contact at all costs and avoid sliding as well. As he pointed out. OK, thank you. Kevin doesn't want to get in the shot. Can he? This is the faculty athletic rep, by the way, hey, for Kevin, uh, New Mexico State good. University. He looks wonderful. That's he right. does. He's okay. got his mask on. He's giving how, us the thumbs up. All right, let's see what you've got. How can I do this properly? I mean, we've got, uh, you know, your crimson. Here, let, me, let me do it down. That's what we're handing it. In. You got your crimson legacy. Crimson right, legacy. That's the red wine. Okay. We got your uh, six shooter. Oh, that's a big bottle right. you're giving him. Very nice. That's right. Maybe I'll switch it out for the mini. I don't know how much. I don't know. <laughs> He was a big drinker, and then he's got two, you All know, right. uh, Pistol Pete's 1888 with the fight song. Very nice. All right, then he's got a can of Aggie nuts. Oh, right you here. now have Aggie nuts? Yeah, we what do. This was, a, you know what? We we were in business with this company for a decade. I saw it in the store. I lost my mind. I thought somebody was trying to get one over on us. Yeah. And uh, I and then once I figured out we had a a deal, but it was expired. I call the Virginia Nut Company, and they're all excited to even get Aggie Nuts now. These are butter uh, butter toffee peanuts there. Ah, yeah. very yeah. nice. So I didn't – there's no tequila in there. Um, so Do we know if Jim's a tequila drinker or we don't know yet? I don't know. You know, I, Jim – it's funny. I came down to UTEP one Friday when they played U of A. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't – I brought my wife, and our deputy AD, Bron Cartwright, brought his wife. We kind of had a date night at UTEP football. We were like, hey, let's actually go watch a game. And then um, Jim and his wife came down for, uh, I think it maybe it was that Wyoming game when they weren't playing. So it's nice to be able to watch a college football game. And um, I'll never forget our fans were like all over me for going to a minor game. I'm like, well, would you prefer to I take the wife out for dinner? You know, what's the deal? So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he drinks, but that is what he's getting. So don't That's tell him and ruin the surprise. I won't. I, I think it's phenomenal. Well, first off, he's not listening to the show, so you're safe there. We know <laughs> that. And you know what? He's going to love all that stuff between the, the, the nuts, the, the wine, the beer, the whiskey. You've covered almost everything there. I think it's going to be good. So if they want to break it out in the press box next Saturday, they're going to be very well uh, taken care of. That's for sure. You know, it's a great AD's gift because no matter what, if you win, you can celebrate. If you lose, you can drown your sorrows. So it's, have you uh, ever, have you ever given an AD's gift and they've consumed it all during the game? No. Uh, you know, that's kind of where I found one of the first, the first collegiate beer was, uh, I'm looking at the bottle right now. My collection is the um, Raging Cajun beer. Mm -hmm. um, and they, um, Brian uh, Maggard, he and I worked together at Mizzou. He's the AD there, and he had it in the visiting AD thing. So it's always 
odd when you're leaving the visiting AD suite, whether you're in Alabama or, and, you know, they give you this intricate thing, so you're not going to leave it and be rude, but it's just odd where you, you've got to go down to the field, you know, and all that stuff. And you're like, okay, who's going to take the visiting AD's basket and all that stuff. So that's a, that's a behind the scenes thing. I like that. I like so. that. Thank you for that. And by the way, um, if fans from El Paso are getting their tickets and heading over for the game, and I hope they do, I hope UTEP has a great rooting section. And of course, Aggie fans will be ready to go for their home opener. Um, what time will the festivities be getting underway next Saturday? Yeah, 3.30 is when the fan fiesta begins. 11 o'clock, the lots will open, you know, for tailgating. But yeah, we would love, because uh, somebody did tell me that miners money is just as green as Aggies money, and so we desperately need it. I mean, I would love 30,000 only Aggie fans, but the reality is for this game, I think it makes it a great atmosphere when there's a healthy visiting crowd. So, you know, obviously it's a 575 uh, area code, but 646-1420. Uh, minor fans can call and get their tickets. Uh, they can go online, uh, nmstatesports.com. You know, the east side is where you'll have your tickets. The nice thing about us, usually the visitors are kind of doing this because the sun is setting in their eyes, but for a 730 game, they should be fine. So I really hope that, um, and I've been reaching out to my El Paso people to come to the game. So I got Bernie Olivas coming. I got Eamon Ayab from the Radisson. He's coming. I got some of the um, newscasters who uh, are Aggie alums. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning on some of my El Paso people who ride the fence with both teams coming. I'll tell you this much. I know some of those El Paso people helped you through last year during COVID. So it's great to see that they will be a part of this this time around. Well, I, I, I just saw that President Wilson um, is coming. So I look forward to thanking her in person um, because we certainly um, you know, and that's what's interesting. A lot of people ask, hey, what's what, what's the deal about the rivalries? And I say, boy, there's a little sandpaper to to the UNM rivalry. And, and, and UTEP is a little more what I'd label a friendly rivalry. I mean, I do know it gets heated at times, but um, um, UTEP really stepped up. I mean, gee whiz, we had our two football games, at the Sun Bowl. Uh, we had um, our volleyball matches there, uh, soccer. Um, and the Haskins Center, you know, with uh, men's and women's basketball. So, yeah, the um, UTEP uh, Gym Center uh, and the whole guy, all those guys helped us out a lot. Final question. I know uh, your public address announcer, uh, Ed Carnathan, is a professional wrestler. Will he be part of the Lucha Libre show showing up in a mask early on? Well, it's not so much will he be in a mask. If he's in the outfit, then that is a match I will not watch because I don't want to get to Ed. I don't want to know Ed that intimately, okay? <laughs> but I did not know that. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to uh, I'll look forward to seeing who climbs in the ring. It won't be me. I hey. doubt it will be Jim Center. And if Jim jumped in there, he'd be in a coat and tie anyway. Look, at, he's always so much more formally dressed than I. Yeah, that's true. Although maybe yeah. he'll show up. Maybe he'll show up in a Utah polo on uh, on Saturday. You never that's know. True. Anything's possible. So now, listen. Cap, can I? I got to throw in a plug because you know we've got our tonight's uh, home opening soccer match. Yes. On WAC Digital, you've got uh, Duke Keith and Heidi Mocha calling that game. Awesome! You got the locomotive team. We do, and I I told Heidi I go I I now I'm afraid of putting out on social media, but she's undefeated as that's color right. analyst there. I don't know if it's her, but. Uh, yeah, that's pretty exciting. She's now got me watching you. I watched last night. I watched the uh, New Mexico United versus the Oakland Roots USL game. Oh, she's got you hooked on soccer. This was, I guess. Right? Yeah. Right. I'm like, why are we watching this game or the locomotive? She goes, no, I just want to see what happens. So uh, this is my entertainment at home now. Fantastic. I'll look forward to seeing you very, very soon. As always, you, you hit, you hit this one out of the park. Enjoy the conversation. And uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Mario. All right. Good chaotic interview. Thanks, Cap. I would have it no other way with you. No other way. He's Mario Mocha joining us here on Sports Talk. Come back with more in a moment right after Charlie won in this traffic update.